Doctor, you have raised the national dialogue. You are saying that it is important for Ethiopia. Can you tell us the benefits of this national dialogue and the people who should participate in the process of national dialogue, including the political parties, the opposition parties and others? As you say, you know, this national dialogue has, you know, I think is, is, is immensely important for Ethiopia for many different reasons. And first and foremost, this for me, national dialogue is, it creates a forum, a forum so that it, it creates an arena through which many different political interests come together and discuss about their state called Ethiopia. So, you know, it's just making the state anew. It's just making the state anew in a, in a new way. So it, it creates you know, a platform through which we can reach you know, kind of consensus, a kind of consensus so that on basic political issues, there is a possibility to agree on these kinds of you know issues. So for me, it is just for creating the platform, creating, you know, it, it creates an arena so that we can we can have our opinions, our differences can be settled, even we can we can agree not to agree even. So for the, the very important uh, benefit that this national dialogue will have is it brings many different uh, interests together in one place. This is important for me because this, this, this has not been the case in the past. Only political, you know, many different, many important political decisions are made by, you know, the winners. So th there is no winner and loser in this national dialogue. Everybody will come together, discuss about their state, and they decide about the future of the state. So this is, I think, uh, one important thing. Another important thing is uh, with this national dialogue, uh, we can we can have you know we can we can we can craft a, a working federal system. A working federal system. I, I, I think as as you guess, federalism is one of the, ma the major issues. There is differences. Uh, on what type of federalism Ethiopia must follow. So I think this, this might be one of the major issues of the divergence. So I think uh, at the end, there will be, you know, a, a consensus. There will be consensus on this issue. Uh, there are, for instance, you know, reform agenda on the type of federalism that we are following. There are, you know, suggestions for inculcating other basis of organizing constituent units uh, other than ethnic identity, like, for instance, there are issues uh, related with, you know, geography, regionalism. Uh, These this important issues will be part of this, uh, you know, because one important thing that I forget to mention is federalism is based on contract. Federalism is based on contract. It is, it is a compact based on contract. So this national dialogue will help us we will help, you know, many different political parties to be part of the political process and be part of this contract. It is a kind of a peace contract. It is kind of a national contract, a national contract, so that Ethiopia will be established, you know, indestructibly, indestructibly. We are going to establish Ethiopia in a way that cannot be distracted. Yeah? So establishing a strong state is, you know, I think it is a stepping stone, a stepping a step stone towards this, this uh, uh, achievement. So I think uh, we have to be, you know, very much interested in everyone. I think not only political parties, not only civil society organizations. As citizens, we are all we are expected to be part and parcel of this uh, you know, national dialogue because it is, you know, it is deciding upon the fate of the state. It is, it, is, it is just, it's, it's not just a political process. It is a means of transforming the conflict that we have been, you know, in for the last 15, 60 or, uh, you know, century years back. So it is, I think, uh, a step toward this uh, peace. You have raised the importance of this national dialogue for countries like Ethiopia. Can you tell us uh, some other countries who were successful in the national dialogue and what should Ethiopians and other fellow Africans uh, do to support this national dialogue to be fruitful? Uh, there are many uh, states now that you know tried this national dialogue and became successful. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the most successful success stories of national dialogue 
is the South African one. So South Africa became successful when they you know, were able to establish a working, a working, uh, a working uh, democratic uh, system. Uh, and it, though not officially federal, South Africa has a federal-like structure after this national dialogue. So post-apartheid South Africa is a typical example of you know, uh, successful national dialogue in Africa. There are also many other national dialogues. For instance, we can mention Tunisia. Tunisia had this national dialogue and they became successful. And we can also mention uh, these kinds of you know, dialogues like in, in, in Rwanda. In Rwanda, we have this uh, you know, national dialogue between different political actors. So they, they, they become successful. And I think they are you know, doing well uh, as far as their economy is concerned. So there are issues on still, the, the, there are political uh, issues which are not resolved. But so we have, you know, and Nepal. Nepal is another example, another example of national dialogue. Uh, Nepal had this national dialogue and they are still, I think, uh, working uh, on it. Uh, so. We can mention many other uh, states that uh, tried national dialogue and uh, solved their political problems. I, I think, you know, uh, by the way, national dialogue is not, you know, you know, a magic formula. It's not a magic formula. It might not always be successful, but if it is, uh, you know, it is done, you know, carefully, meticulously, then uh, it will be a success story. It will be a success story. And Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia can learn many lessons from this uh, past national dialogues. For instance, the South African one, the national dialogue and reconciliation was more successful. And I think uh, the, the the commissioner and uh, his colleague were in South Africa, you know, looking for important lessons around. So that they have been in, in Rwanda also. So I think. Uh, there are many different lessons that we can accrue from past national dialogues. And uh, the most important thing is, I think for me, trust building, trust building. So with this national dialogue, uh, I think trust can be built uh, so that we can discuss things freely and we can arrive at you know workable solution for all of us. So it is based on a win-win uh, kind of uh, you know arrangement. So. This is these experiences happen. For instance, uh, how Mandela, you know, because in South Africa there are even there are some who are still, you know, uh, against the, the the position taken by Mandela. Uh, Mandela sacrificed many of his supporters for the sake of you know establishing peace and the workable democracy. So Ethiopia, in Ethiopia, we have to our political leaders must learn from the politicians, uh, specifically of other. Uh, you know, countries like Mandela, for, for instance, he, he sacrificed, you know, his fame, his, his, his acceptance in legitimacy among the blacks, for instance, because they were for a black dominated state, but he didn't allow that. He worked for a state that works for both all South Africans, be it black or white. So this kind of, you know, this kind of accumulative attitude is expected from our political leader. So, we are, well, we have to be ready uh, to, to give and take. Mm -hmm. We have to be ready to give and take. So it is not just a matter of you know winning our political ideas, uh, you know, seeing our own position as the position of the state. It's not a matter of that. It is a matter of you know coming together, coming to equidistance, so that we can balance different interests uh, that are around in, in our state. As part of the economic reformers, the new leadership is working to expand privatization, including mega yeah. companies like telecommunication and the banking. Mm -hmm. What benefits will such measures have on the economic development of Ethiopia? Yeah, I think it is. This is I think this is one of the reform the reformers that the new the new uh, government uh, brings, uh, and I, it has I think many different advantages. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, globalization is a reality. We are now living in a globalized economy. We cannot, you know, stay out of this, you know, very much interlinked economic system that we are in. So, uh, as far as the, this, you know, government-owned, uh, you know, uh, enterprises or kind of, you know, government-owned businesses are concerned, 
uh, we cannot stay, we cannot stay without the participation of the private sector. Now is now is the time to 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 work with the to work with the private sector. The role of the private sector has been, you know, increasing in many other economies. So uh, one one important thing that uh, I appreciate from this uh, uh, economic reformers is it is based on you know pragmatic economic stance, pragmatic economic stance. It's not just you know based on some economic orientation of you know neoliberalism. It's not uh, based on uh, developmental state as was as it was in the past. So the government is choosing what is workable for Ethiopia. What 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 will be beneficial for the, the, the Ethiopian economy? And we have seen the result. For instance, uh, the, the national the privatization, though it's not you know wholly nationalized. The nationalization, uh, the privatization efforts by the government is helping boost the economy. Uh, we can we can mention uh, the, the the privatization of, uh, for instance, the Ethiopian telecom, and uh, generally the economic policy. The homegrown economic policy of the government will uh, help Ethiopia boost its economy and look its own resources and tap its own resources so that we can, you know, have, uh, you know, an economy, a strong economy, which is basically uh, built on the resources that we have uh, than, you know, you know, looking outside. So. I think uh, it is uh, it's, 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 it's nice, a nice move from the side of the government uh, in coming up with this homegrown, homegrown economic policy. And within it, the privatization is helping boost our economy. So the details can, 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 be, you know, can, can be seen in many respects, in many respects. What challenges will likely face in any efforts the government is making to privatize the national economy? Privatization means integrating our service with, you know, the, this uh, uh, the international e economic system. Is that not? So we are more when we are more integrated with this, the international system, we have to be we have to have you know the necessary tools, the necessary capacity, so that we are we are not we are not going to be on the losing side. So we have we have to have we have to have you know create a strong a strong capacity so that our institutions uh, our institutions must be in a position in a position that can compete with you know foreign uh, institutions for instance so for instance we are going to invite we are going to open the financial market so our financial institutions must must capacity themselves so that they can compete with you know. Uh, the, the would-be financial institutions in Ethiopia. So, I think it is a matter of making ourselves ready for the competition. For the, 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 the for, for it's ensuing. We cannot we cannot avoid it, but we have to make ourselves ready. We can we can make ourselves ready. So, I think it, it is uh, on the side of the government to to, to prepare uh, our our economy, our institutions, so that they can play the game. Uh, you know, in a way they can be profitable and win the system. Otherwise, it's just the opening of the economy might create, you know, many problems uh, if we are not ready to make our service ready. For the last five years, Ethiopia is trying to connect with neighboring countries through infrastructure like road and railway. What economic benefit does this serve? It serves, for sure, it serves, you know, in many way, Ethiopia is one of it's a dominant it's a dominant economy in the region in the Horn of Africa, and we have many comparative advantages in this regard. For instance, you know the the, the, the electric power that we are selling to many Horn, Af Horn African countries, so we are going to be you know dominant as far as electricity is concerned. Uh, so and also uh, we have many resources, many resources. So the resources that we have can be you know, not only exported to the United States of America, to the, the, the North America and Europe, we can we can we can also you know export our markets to to, to, to the market that uh, uh, we have in neighboring countries. Uh, there are you know potentials in this regard. Ethiopia, for instance, is you know a grain producing economy. So, for instance, the, the wheat that we are producing is one potential area that we can export to our neighboring countries. 
the, 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 infrastructure, the, the infrastructural link between uh, Ethiopia and the neighboring African countries can help boost this process uh, because without infra infrastructure, in economic integration is impossible. So we are now connected, you know, more and more to our neighboring countries, not only uh, economically, this has its own, you know, impact on, you know, the possible polit political integration between the Horn states. Uh, and so the Horn is very much a, a connected, interdependent in many respects. So the economy is one, and we have, you know, multiple multiple areas uh, we are connected. For instance, if you see, uh, you know, uh, uh, the different peoples that are living in, in the Horn of Africa, for instance, we have the Afas in Djibouti, in Ethiopia, in Eritrea. Uh, we have the Somalis in Somalia, in the Somali region in Ethiopia. Uh, we have the, the, the Tigray in Eritrea and in Northern Ethiopia. So you see, there are many connections that we have. So if there is economic integration, if we can work and you know develop this economic integration, it will pave the way for greater political uh, unity. We can think of, for instance, confederation between these uh, uh, Horn states. So it, it is it's a first step for me. It is a first step. The economy integration is a first step towards this, a better political integration in the future. So it has many, many, many benefits. The Ethiopian government is investing massively on power generation projects, including hydro, wind and geothermal yeah. energy resources. Yeah. What does or how does such investment benefit the economic sector of the country? Yeah, it, it is clear, it's obvious, because, because without energy, you cannot, you know, can boost your economy. So uh, the, the plan is to, 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 to shift from agrarian economy to, you know, industrialized economy. So in the process of this, industrialization cannot be, you know, successful without energy. So the government is strategically investing, strategically investing on uh, uh, the energy sector, and which is, you know, a must to do because in order to, in order to uh, achieve industrialization, uh, this, is, this is one thing that must be given, you know, priority. Uh, besides, uh, it, it's, it also helps Ethiopia, you know, uh, generate, you know, huge, huge sum of foreign currency, by the way. So, you know, Ethiopia needs foreign currency. Uh, how we, we are witnessing how this shortage of foreign currency is impacting our export sector, our import sector. So, you see, it, it, it helps us. It, for instance, the energy sector, if it is, you know, if, if the, the, the ongoing projects are completed, it will boost, you know, Ethiopia's uh, uh, share uh, in the economy internationally. And that will also help us, you know, accumulate uh, enough uh, foreign currency for import export sector uh, in particular and uh, the economy in general. Under it is Green Legacy Initiative, the Ethiopian yeah. government is undertaking sustained work on tree planting and basin development campaigns in the last five years. What yeah. is your comment on this? It's just fantastic. Uh, because uh, you just uh, you know, make me remember. Because uh, leadership is important. Leadership is important. Specifically in countries like ours, without a strong leadership, without a, you know, a, a leader with strategic uh, thinking, uh, you know, achieving our development goals is impossible. So Ethiopia need to, you know, uh, these kinds of, you know, important initiatives. And the prime minister in this regard is doing well. Uh, so this, this, this green legacy is, you know, but, you know, it's, it's first for me, it is about changing our attitude, changing the, the, the attitude of citizens towards development. We, we might be different on many different political issues. We, have to, we might have difference in many different uh, issues, but as far as the, the development of the state is concerned, we are one. Uh, we have to work together. We can work together because planting a tree 
is not helping Prime Minister Abe or the government. It is I am planting for the sake of you know the state, for the sake of my own interest. So I think these kinds of initiatives are important. There are many many other initiatives. For instance, uh, his his move toward this you know you know. Uh, boosting the tourism sector by, you know, the Gabatala Hagar initiative, Gabatala Shagar initiative. These kind of initiatives, are, they are, it seems, you know, simple. But for me, it is, you know, he is showing the way. He is showing the way so that people might be, you know, interested in making this possible. So the, the green legacy is one of the most important legacies of the prime minister. I think it will be in the future, we will remember the prime minister for his initiative on specifically green legacy. Ethiopia is carrying out massive irrigation based wheat production and it has even started exporting wheat to other countries this year. Yeah. Uh, what impact will such a work will have in the overall economic reform the government wants to implement? Yeah, it is, I think, a new, it is, it's a paradigm shift. It's a paradigm shift as far as our policy on agriculture is concerned. In the past, our policy was basically, uh, you know, uh, making uh, small farming, small farmers productive. But now the focus is shifted. And now we are thinking of, you know, these kinds of, you know, irrigation schemes here and there and the, the, the cluster. Uh, you know, these these are, I think, for me, represents a shift, a shift toward this, you know, boosting the agricultural sector so that it can play, uh, you know, than the traditional role that it has in the economy, and it's also a way toward this industrialization. So, uh, having, you know, peasants that are not, you know, limited on small farmers, rather that are working in cooperation in cooperatives. Uh, you know, you know, farming these kinds of you know, huge uh, amount of landes. They are going to be you know, uh, they, are, they are going to work on uh, you know, farm based industry like, for instance, manufacturing industries or agro industries are a possibility uh, with this kinds of uh, uh, shift. So I think that the the, the prime minister specifically. Uh, has this, you know, uh, for me, it is it's, it's his his intention, his intention in changing the economy in, in general, uh, elevating poverty in general, is something that uh, helps him to come up with such initiatives. So I think we have to we have to work on that, but we have to we have to also go, we should not also forget that small farmers small farmers productivity at, at, at that level is also important because Ethiopia though it has you know large you know large amount of landes here and there many of our peasants are working on small farmers so we have to have you know you know irrigation schemes are important but there are many many parts of Ethiopia is not irrigable uh -huh. many parts of Ethiopia are not irrigable so we have to have this mixed kind of uh, agricultural agricultural approach, I think. So, uh, for instance, we have, if, if we are, if, if you are working on this for the last, for the coming five, 10 years, I think uh, we can, we can, we can achieve, you know, not only food self-sufficiency, but we can export this to neighboring and uh, other countries also. So I think there is a huge potential and we have seen uh, a tip of that. Since coming to power, Dr. Abiy Ahmed has initiated and implemented several uh, mega projects, including Entoto Park, Unity Park, Shagar Riverside Beautification Project, and yeah. several other projects such as Wonchi Lake, Gorgora, and Koisha are under construction in different yeah. parts of Ethiopia. How do these projects impact the economic reform of the country? Yeah, for sure, it, it impacts the economy because uh, I think he's showing us uh, how Ethiopia is resourceful and how can we tap the resources that we have. This is specifically related with you know the tourism sector. Uh, so we have all these uh, you know natural and man-made resources around, but we are not we are not using it you know 
uh, effectively. So uh, this project is highlights that if we work on our natural resources, uh, we can have you know you know we can boost the economy in many respects. So I think uh, for sure uh, with these projects and uh, I think more are coming. Uh, so we can we can the, the tourism sector can contribute for the national economy in a great way. And this is, I think, uh, uh, one of the most important uh, initiatives by the prime minister uh, in showing directions for others so that how can we uh, change the economy sustainably. Doctor, have you got any final message before we wind up our today's discussion? Yeah. Uh, Ethiopia is now on reform. We are still on reform. No? We are st still in, in reform. And there are many positive elements that we have seen since uh, the coming to power of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. But there were also challenges. There have been challenges, is that not? There have been challenges that we have been facing. One thing that I want to emphasize is nowadays we have to work together. We have to work together. There are many political differences around, is that not? We have many political uh, differences, but the thing is, there is only one way of making Ethiopia stronger. There is only one way making Ethiopia, you know, a state, a state, a stronger state. This is only by contributing our share, contributing our share, uh, you know, so that we can we can we can have a better state called Ethiopia. I hope that. Uh, if all these initiatives are successful, we will have a strong uh, state, indestructible state, uh, and uh, we will be, you know, of the middle income countries in the near future. So let us do our share, let us contribute, uh, let us not, you know, one thing that, that, that most of the time uh, intrigues me is the political culture that the political culture that we have, uh, our political culture is uh, either you support or you oppose. Uh, but there is a middle ground. Oh, there are areas that we can oppose, but there are also areas that we need to support. For instance, this reform has its own positive elements. There are also some downsides. So, as far as the, the, the good sides are concerned, we have to uh, we have to. We have to help, we have to contribute uh, and appreciate the government. If there are downsides, we have to criticize so that the government might you know, correct its, its, its uh, you know, mistakes. So I think uh, let, us, let, us be, uh, let, us, uh, let us make ourselves part of this reform. Uh, it's not just by supporting, but also coming up with you know, critical, critical uh, by criticizing, by bringing critics, so that uh, changes can be effected. Dr. Yasin Hussein, Assistant Professor of Federalism and Governance Studies, thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Dear our esteemed viewers, this is all we have for today. Thank you for watching.